Pop charts are wonderful. I don't know. Because they're a delicacy. Yeah. Um, start by talking about the elephant in the room. And uh, it's a happy elephant. It's a happy little elephant. Um, appreciate your guys' responses to the Hinch interview. Um, could be recency bias, but I think it might be my favorite piece of content I've ever done. Um, felt very comfortable, really happy with the questions, even happier with the answers. I mean, there were certain things I asked him that I didn't get, or I didn't expect to get a huge response from. And he gave me four or five minutes of, of an answer. Um, yeah, I, you guys know that I have a tendency to be very, eh, about some things I put out and I don't know. I knew with that. I knew you guys would receive it well. Um, it was funny. I had to, and I'm going to keep doing this with the guests that I get. But um, I had known about this uh, about a week ago. I, I knew that I was going to be interviewing them. We recorded it. Today's Monday. We recorded, or I'm sorry, today's Wednesday. We recorded on a Monday. Uh, so I knew it was coming. Um, and I just kind of had to sit on it. Very few people in my life really knew about it. But uh, I was very confident in the final products, and I was confident that you guys would like it. And, and I'm, I'm happy to see that it's being well-received. I'm going to try. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys I'm going to try for. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't, <laughs> it's probably very easy right now for me to, to talk up the guy, given the fact that I just interviewed him, but, um, uh, what an intelligent guy, what a smart guy, um, and really, the the difference in the way that he talks about the Tigers and the way that he talks about baseball versus the way that other managers that we've had here do it's it's just night and day. Um, time to update the interview background. Uh, I don't know. Well, to be honest, Mike, what was so frustrating with those last several months at Barstool is I liked what we were putting out. I liked the video in Ann Arbor. I liked the Lions playoff videos. I liked the the early Chris and Company episodes that we were doing. Um, if I do a piece of content that I think is just okay and it doesn't get um, and it doesn't get the kind of reception that I I, I want then I understand it, but it, it's very frustrating when you're putting out things that you feel good about, you know, the Scoobal interview, frat house video, and it's just getting no traction. Um, so I, I feel like I have put out some good stuff really probably since the calendar turned to January. Um, it's playing for tomorrow. I'll probably just be here. I'm going to get a workout in in the morning or early afternoon. Uh, tomorrow's my last day of freedom. My parents get home late, so. Uh, really, I don't have any big um, plans since uh, uh, until next week for the home opener. Yeah, I'm. I appreciate. I the longer you guys watch these interviews, and I'm sure you've probably already noticed, there are certain running themes uh, to the questions. 
Um, and, and one of them, I'm fascinated by people's confidence and how people view themselves. Because I, I find, I just find the, um, I just find that idea, the idea of confidence to be an interesting idea. Um, to the people who wake up and, and feel as though they're very good at what they do um, and feel very secure about themselves. So I always find it interesting because we praise AJ for being this great manager, right? Um, and I'm just curious if he goes through his own life with that mindset, the same way that I asked Nick and KB if they thought that they were funny. Um, I find uh, the way that people view themselves compared to the way that we view them to be an interesting dynamic and something I always want to ask about. Um, how long did I officially know? I, not long. I mean, I made my video about 30, 45 minutes after I had found out the news. I wanted to get it uploaded before the unnamed show just so that uh, I could kind of be the first to announce it. Um, but I, I would say that I got a hint that I was not going to last there really um, probably around the, really about around the beginning of the year when Michigan won the natty and the lions made the, you know, won a playoff game the same week. And there was just nothing uh, in terms of uh, the back and forth between me and Barstool. I had a pretty good um, idea. Um, yeah, that was my, my prediction Diller. Do I think I'm good at my job? Um, I think I'm good at certain parts of my job. I know when I put out good content versus when I don't. I felt really good about this. I th I think I'm a very good interviewer. I think I'm very intelligent when it comes to the Tigers, when it comes to baseball. Uh, if you put me in the right situation, I can be very good at my job. Uh, but there's certain things that I think I can like survive at, but not necessarily thrive at. Um. Does Barstool have egg in their face? Today? No, I, I I wouldn't view it that way, Chris. Um, I don't think they are um, paying attention to something like that and saying, oh, man, we missed out. Um, I'm very proud of, of that interview. Um, but at the same time, you know, one thing Dave said, and I agree with it in some ways, was the idea of me not being a great fit there. That kind of content as much as I think it's very good and I, I, as much as I know you guys think it's very good, you know, an interview with AJ Hinge probably wouldn't move the needle a ton at, uh, bar stool. Uh, now I, I, like I said, I, I'm proud of it. Um, and, and I do think, you know, I think there could be, there could still be a pl uh, place for something like that at bar stool. I'll, I'll, I'll argue that to the end of time, but it, it's kind of irrelevant what I think. Um, so no, I, Favorite fast food spot or rallies maybe? Is Wingstop a fast food place? Is that considered a fast food place? Because I've had Wingstop recently and it fucks. No. Um... What I said in my video when I when I left Barstool was genuinely how I felt, which is in that moment I felt a sense of relief. I didn't I wasn't gonna relapse over something that silly. I felt tremendous stress for about twenty four hours or so following the Francis blog. Um just because I didn't know how to handle myself. And that was, it was weird because you guys saw these live streams and you guys saw, you know, the way that I talked about the company and really for, it's interesting how it changes because for about a year, I was telling you guys, I want to make it work at Barstool. I want to make it work at Barstool. When I read the Francis blog, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to work here anymore. It was instantaneous. It's just like, they don't want me here. I don't want to be here. The best is probably move on. Yeah, he knows. I, and I, just listening to him, he sounds so much more excited um, about this team 
than uh, than he has in the past. Not to say he hasn't been excited about previous groups, but I really think he feels confident about the direction that uh, the player development is going in. No, uh, I'm going to give that a lot of time, negative Mets fan. I, I, I've i reached out to certain people, um, but, you know, I, right now, you know, a, the, a lot of the wounds are still fresh. <laughs> um, when I feel like the time is right, I'll... Um, uh, I'll do something, but right now, um, I think it's kind of just best to go our separate ways. No, there was originally plans um, that uh, for us to do something like that, but um, now that I don't work at Barstool, I don't really feel a need to do that. I want to, uh, so much of that, uh, there will definitely be a trip to, um, Toronto. There will definitely be a trip to Chicago when we play the Cubs. Um, there could be other, um, there could be other outlets or other places I go to. A lot of it will be depending on what my financial situation is, what my employment situation is. I've set up on to make the trip to Houston. I've been saying that for multiple years. Uh, I don't know if that would work out now. Um, you can always stir things up with Barstool. So no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about that. Yes, the I, I I might make another Cleveland trip too. Yeah, uh, I want to try to get to a few places I haven't gone to. A wild card here, um, Mike. I have a cousin that lives in Arizona. Potentially a trip down to uh, Chase Field when they play the Diamondbacks. Um, you know, it's not about. I understand that, but I don't have any interest in. And I'm, I'm sure I already did, but I don't have any interest in burning bridges. Like I don't, um, I still respect and appreciate the time that I had at Barstool. Um, and, and I don't, I think with the way that Dave handled things on the way out and the way that I handled things on the way out, I just think it's best for, um, me just to kind of move on and for them to move on. Uh, I think they always play in Pittsburgh, don't they? Yeah, I think they do. You know, the problem with that stuff, though, is there's no resolution to drama because one person always has their side and another person always has their side. And then drama snowballs because you're going to have one section of the fan base that's going to believe one person, one section of the fan base that's going to believe another person. Um, and then it's just an endless cycle of drama. So in a lot of ways, the best way to avoid that stuff is to not talk about it. Well, I still, still interact with Barstool stuff on Twitter. Yeah, I, I don't, I've seen some people get upset at me about that, but like I'm, look, there are certain things. Um, at Barstool that I have no interest in paying much attention to now that I don't work there. But there are certain things that I'll continue to promote and like just because I find them to be funny content. Like I'll continue to follow the dozen and I'll continue to, uh, you know, follow the baseball stuff they put out or mostly sports and stuff like there's, if I see something that's funny, then it's funny. It doesn't matter to me if it's, um, 
if it's bar store related or not. Um, I've texted a little bit with Jeff, yeah. Am I upset? I mean, it it will be some upset. No, it's something that I will miss. I really like doing trivia. It was fun. Yep. Yep, that will not be going away. No, no. A lot of that was overblown. Again, I don't want to rehash a lot of this stuff. I, um, one big problem with me is that I create narratives regarding what people think of me that often don't exist. Um, I'm a very, 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 very paranoid person. Um, as I was going through a time of tremendous frustration, whether it be through Lights, Camera, Barstool, or through the dozen, a lot of that frustration for whatever reason, like, Jeff got the brunt of. I, I don't know why. Um, but no, th this... Oh, so much of that was commenters saying, oh, uh, uh, you know, Jeff hates Chris, Chris hates Jeff. No, I, I... Jeff's actually one of the people at Barstool I plan on maintaining something of a relationship with after, you know, now that I've left. Um... Most of my favorite things um, that uh, they've – or that I did at the company, a lot of them uh, Jeff was involved in. So, no, I don't uh, – a lot of that was overblown. And I – for a minute, I kind of played into it just for the fun of it. Um, but then it stopped being fun. So I just like, moved on. Um Um, I'm disappointed in myself that I presented such an image of me that they felt like they had to walk a tightrope when they were around me. Um, because that shouldn't be the case. I, I, I chose to work there, you know, when Dave offered me the job and, and I should be treated like any other employee. Um, but I also know for a while I was not doing well, you know, and, and so it's, it's, it's tough. Um, yeah. I haven't watched Shogun. Thank you, Harrison. Yeah, like I said, it felt great. Um, really happy with the interview. Uh, the 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 hard part's just gonna be getting more guests, man. Um, so, uh, but hopefully uh, that can continue. Um, um It just financially, you know, if I don't have a job, I don't know if I, um, Um, no, I just think we really came out firing 
and asked a bunch of people and we're kind of just, some people didn't get back to us. Some people did. Um, best current Barstool employee in terms of interviewing? Probably Eddie. Yeah. Am I going to get on dating apps? I don't know. I've reached out to some people. Yeah. Um, what I've learned in kind of the content game is that you more so like get found. Like it's not a, you know, here's my resume. I'm going to apply. Like, yes. Okay. That's a bit. YouTube money, as long as I'm under contract, still goes through or goes to Barstool. Um, in a few months, I will be able to um, cut that off and I will be able to monetize on my own. Um, but we have the the following and we have the subscribers. We have the uh, the ability to, to do all that. Um, it was actually a third party that reached out to me about that and set it up. Um, I was, I was surprised, but pleasantly surprised. You know, AJ does not do a ton of interviews of that length. Um, but it was clear talking to him that he had seen my stuff and, um, was aware of what I'd done and, and, you know, felt comfortable talking to me. Yeah, my fucking cell phone works. I don't know what the fuck happened today, man. My apologies to the people who were listening. I I think it might have been on their end because I don't I, I was sitting in a place where I always have good reception. And they're doing fine. I mean, it was kind of a weird trip for them in the month in which they were gone. You know, I lost my job. Um, how did I prepare for the Hinch interview? Um You know, you do a deep dive into him. Wikipedia page. Um, you know, I know a fair amount of his uh, of his history just because he's been working here for a while. And, and so there were a lot of things I wanted to, to ask him about. I mean, I just, I don't know, to me, I think of the things I talk about in my videos, the things I get asked about on Twitter or asked about in my content. Uh, a lot of those questions that you guys ask are questions I want to know the answer to as well. Like, I want to know wh where he's at with Spencer Torkelson. I want to know where he's um where he's at with with uh, Austin Meadows and and Javi Baez so um you know I, I just try to avoid generic stuff I'm, I maybe start a little bit generic just to kind of you know break the ice but after a while I, I like to get kind of into the meat and potatoes of what I want to talk about um and, and I, I mean I learned this with. Yes, he is. Uh, I learned this with the Scooble interview is that, you know, we put labels on all this stuff. But at the end of the day, when I was talking to Scooble, he's a late 20-something who loves baseball. I'm a late 20-something who loves baseball. So we're going to have common ground with that. Um, was his answer about Javi satisfying too? It was. Um, and, and I... I came into that question and I even said it before I asked the question is I, it would be silly of me to ask for criticism. And I think that's a mistake. Some people would make is they would try to put him in a, in a gotcha position. Um, he's not going to criticize his player. He, he has to see this guy every day, but I also, I know AJ is a smart person and he's aware of the struggles. He's not going to come out and say, Oh, actually hobby has been really good. No, he hasn't. We've watched. Um, I think what he's telling Javi is exactly what a smart manager should be telling Javi Baez, which is 
Don't put the pressure on yourself to repeat what you did in Chicago. Just be the best version of yourself that you can be here. Um, I think he's saying all the right things. Sadly, I think he's just saying it to a guy who's just lost the ability to pick up the baseball. Like, I, I don't... That's the thing. I think that's he's doing everything possible as a manager to be an effective manager for his player. I mean, he's he said he went to Puerto Rico with the guy just to just to kind of get to know him better. I mean, that's really going above and beyond for a player who's struggling. Um, so I was satisfied with the answer. The one thing that surprised me um, was when I asked him if he was surprised about Torkelson's struggles in the first year and a half of his career, and he said yes, or he said no, he was not surprised. Um, that was interesting to me, um, and, and I don't, I don't want to put words in his mouth, uh, but it, he almost made it sound like they felt like he was rushed a little bit. Where he said, you know, he put up good numbers in minor leagues, not overwhelming numbers. He said he felt like his process needed to change a little bit. Uh, I found that answer really, really fascinating because uh, I just didn't expect that he would say that about a player that he's been managing for, for several years now. I, he's obviously right. I mean, we saw how bad Torkelson was for the first year and a half, but that was um that was an interesting answer. Do I re-listen to my interviews? Oh, parts of them, yeah. Um, no, obviously they're a little lengthy, but... Who have I gotten starstruck from the most I met through my job? I mean, when I was at Barstool, the people that I got the most starstruck by were the people I worked with. It was like Dave and Big Cat and um, PFT and shit like, like um Those were like, they were internet celebrities to me. No, but I, we did off the air talk a little bit about the fact that I had just left um, Barstool. Um, since I'm sure there's been more interaction than what you see on the interviews, who's been your favorite guest to talk to so far? Uh, great question. Uh, Scoobal, with Hinch being a close second. Um, I was waiting for the recordings to upload on his end, and this was one of my early interviews. So me and me and Tarek talked for probably about 10 or 15 minutes after um, that uh, uh, that interview ended. Um, so that was, yeah. Um, I, I asked AJ some off the record stuff, and obviously I'm going to keep that off the record. And then he was very open about it, which I appreciated. But I would say those two stand out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how. Closely, he follows Barstool. I know he follows he, he follows me. <laughs> Am I having more fun? Uh, I feel a certain sense of of freedom that I didn't feel initially. Um, I I think mentally I'm in a much better place, but we'll see where it go. How I feel in a few months. You know, I'm not um I'm not freaking out right now. I got time to to look. Um, and and think about what's next, which I'm I'm really excited about. Um, I really really tried to get better, and that's look. It sucks to use mental health as such a crutch, and I don't like to. But you guys watched these streams, and you guys saw me. I just couldn't get right, and and the content took a hit, and the Twitter following took a hit, and the way that my coworkers saw me took a hit. Um. And and you can try as long as you want to write a ship or to write yourself. But looking back on it now, I think it was always going to end with some amicable parting of ways. Um, just I was I was very bitter about some things that had happened. Um, and I think they were probably a little bit bitter towards me. So I understand. 
Uh, no, there was not. Uh, I'd be open to that, Michael. Uh, I love Tony, and obviously, I'm uh, Justin's a good friend of mine. Um, there, there was not. No, I think because I just seen Justin like a few a few days ago for the fantasy baseball draft. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'll see who I reach out to. I, I'm, we'll see. Yeah. Do I worry about how society is just plunging into the idea that everything is conspiracy theory? I mean, that's one of the things I'm concerned about. Um, We're living in the dumbest timeline. Like, I'm confident in that. He is, yeah. Yeah. Um, I appreciate him doing that. I've told him at any time, like, you know, I don't want to uh, spread you too thin. You've given me a ton. Um, but I... He's enjoying this. I can tell that he's enjoying this, and I enjoy his enthusiasm. He's been great. Um, It doesn't make me laugh. It's just hard to do. It's just, he has other sources of income, yes. Absolutely not. Um, just because you may have shared a difference with opinion uh, of opinion doesn't I, – I've, I've – I, I, I don't – I'm not mad. I, I you know. Um, his, no, he's not, but I, I share those calls after to, with him after they're over. Um, it's possible there will be adjustments as we go along, Jacob, and there already have been, uh, tech upgrades, new camera, new microphone. So, um, there will be, it will evolve and it will change. I, I think that I will stay working on my own time. I mean, I would love to be a part of something with the Tigers, whether it be TV or radio. Um, you know, I view myself, and maybe this is arrogant, as like the ultimate fan. And I think that there's a place for that with not just my enthusiasm, but also my knowledge, you know, what I know. Um, it's just a matter of finding it. Any plan to attempt in some in-person interviews? Maybe one day. Like I said, the show will evolve, uh, so I, I'm not sure. Um, any plans to uh, – when I find a job. Uh, yeah. I, I do. Yeah. Um, um, 
would might have missed uh i like the hire i I liked the hire from from the beginning he was the guy that i wanted i think it makes a lot of sense i think he's going to do a good job but i also think it'll take time Uh, i don't i expect year one is basically year zero to me i don't expect anything from that team well i mean i'm i've been lucky that i've interviewed some really interesting subjects so far so instead of leading off by saying, hey, I work for Barstool, I can lead off by saying, hey, like A.J. Hinch and Tarek Skubal are two of the biggest sports names in Michigan. Uh, so I, so that gives me some credibility. Um, can I still be fair and unbiased after building these relationships with people in the organization? I can be, f- yes. My criticism will probably be a little bit less harsh, as is often the case when you've met these people, you've kind of gotten to know these people. But um One great thing in my experience, and I got to give the Tigers coaches and players a lot of credit for this, is they have told me on multiple occasions, you know, don't back down. We welcome the criticism. You know, if we suck, tell us we suck. Um, I think there's there's a lot of organizations that would be much more sensitive. But the Tigers have done a a great job of, of, you know, I've never gotten any negative feedback regarding, and I'm sure people have got pissed at what I've said, but I've never heard personally any negative feedback from any of the players or coaches or anyone within the organization telling me just, you know, like what the lions do with Valenti to, you know, tell me to stop, tell me to slow down, tell me to change my criticism or how I talk about him. I, I do Jacob. Um, I think right now we're on such a good run with, um, with interviewing Detroit athletes that I don't want to, I don't want to rock that boat too much, but uh, there will be changes. Do I think I'm a winner or a loser? It depends on the day. You know, the the clip I posted, (laughs) and he was, he gave a great answer. And, And like, AJ is a very logical, smart guy. But when, and you guys can see it on the clip, when AJ says he's going to swing and miss, he's going to chase, I, it took a lot in me not to burst out laughing. I don't know why it's, well, it's, it speaks to how obvious and apparent his struggles are, but I also just love, like, I, I, that's what I love about AJ is how logical he is. Like, he's not going to, he's not going to say, oh, well, you know, his pitch recognition is actually great. You guys just haven't seen it. Like, he know he knows what kind of play this guy is. You can point out, he's a great communicator because you can point out the flaws in a player while not making it seem like you're overly criticizing him. That would slap for sure, yeah. Uh, Emma Stone, White Whale. Would gas station Chris, what would Chris, gas station Chris say if you went back in time and told him that you would interview AJ? Um, he'd be proud. I mean, he'd feel like he grew up a lot to get himself into that position where he's doing um, something like that. Um, are, am I happy with the interview? Is a reaction to this interview? Yeah, th- this one I am. And, and it's not even like it's doing gangbusters on YouTube, but it's doing great on socials. I'm sure podcast wise, it's doing really well. Um, when the reception is that overwhelmingly positive, I'm not going to say the numbers don't matter because they obviously do, but it gives me a lot of hope that this thing will grow. Rock the Casbah, rock the Casbah. Sharif, don't like it. Rock the Casbah, 
Rock the Casbah. Yeah, so um a bit of a flex. I was the AJ interview had been planned before I left Barstool. When I realized that my first big piece of content post Barstool would be AJ, I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. Um There's no plans for that right now, but I'm not going to rule anything out in the future. Yeah, okay. That was that was very interesting um with to me too, Chris. Because I I originally had a question about the Astros scandal that I took out, but he ended up talking about it more than I expected him to. Because I he's doing me a favor by being on the show. He's already talked about it. Um so I didn't expect he gave me a lot more than I thought he would with that, um, which I appreciated. I also think, and I mean, he, he'll do. I also feel like he's being too hard on himself for that. To be honest, I I, I really just don't care anymore. Um, they're not one of the worst teams in baseball. I can understand somebody thinking they might not be good, but they're not. They're not one of the worst teams in baseball. Yeah, that will uh, that will continue. Uh, I thought at first that I was doing. That that was a positive to announce who I was bringing in, and then posting it. It actually, I think, did me more harm than good. Um, next movie review. Um, golly, that that Zendaya Christmas or Christmas tennis movie. <laughs> Chris, uh, tennis movie with Mike Faced. Um, Challengers. I my phone kept getting dropped. My I don't know how, but um, besides that, it was fine. You know, I I have a good relationship with Dan. Yeah, I'm very confident Ursula um Urshela plays tomorrow. It is, yes. Janet, Marty, who are you people? Marty, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't think it hurts his confidence. I think it probably puts less pressure on him. Um, and, and AJ talked about that with me today, that he's, you know, it's not an accident that he's moving down in the lineup. Um, this <sighs> I think he'll play. I just don't know if he'll start against the lefty. Um, I have not. No. Been to West Michigan. Been to Whitecaps, but. Any reasonable chance the low key, low expectation approach works with Javi? <sighs> Even relative to the low expectations, 
Because I've given up on the idea that he's going to even be close to what he was in Chicago. I still don't think he reaches what is a very low bar. Like, his OPS was in the 500s last year, guys. Any, any, you know, a lot of players get released putting up those numbers. First manager to get fired. If they stumble out of the gate, I could see John Schneider for the Blue Jays getting canned. I'm not really a big fan of him. A uh, bit of both. bit of both, Jacob. Um, I don't know. I hope so. I could ask Hasty about that. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I, I really, th if they're good this year and he is continuing to fog down the lineup. It wouldn't shock me if they just say, fuck it, like, put McKinstry at short. Because I just, the argument I've always made with Hobby is that you can struggle. I think Miggy was like this, where you can struggle or lose power and still bring something to your team by putting together good at bats. Like Miggy would have like a five, six pitch at bat where, yeah, he'd roll over to short, but the guy on deck is watching that at bat and seeing a pitcher work his pitch count up, seeing what stuff he's featuring, you know, okay, is he going to, is he going to give me something off speed? Is he going to try to start me off with a heater upstairs when it's hobby? Who's just swinging at everything that doesn't help anyone in the lineup. That doesn't make anybody in the lineup better. Um, so, I mean, it wouldn't shock me if they cut ties. Um, yeah, look, I'll be real, man. We They got to get off to a good start. And I'm very excited for tomorrow, but I'm more nervous for tomorrow than I was any. Like, you got to start. You got to win tomorrow. Win tomorrow with Scuba on the mound. You're playing the White Sox. White Sox fucking stink. You know, don't fuck around this year. Do I think Young could be called up this year? Maybe. Uh, concerned when you have 159 games left is, is, I don't know, very disappointed would be the way I'd feel about it. It would be. I mean, you open with six games on the road. I think, you know, if you're going 500 on the road, you're getting off. To, you know, that's a good start. Um, I think four and two is very realistic uh, against these two teams. Um, would I interview Ben Verlin? Yeah, I would. Yeah.
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was a squad, man. That's what I want to try to get is a few few players from that team. Um Um, I really think AJ is going to mix it up this year, depending on, I don't think he has a set closer. I haven't seen a whole lot about the new concessions. I mean, it looks to me like they did exactly what I wanted them to do with the scoreboard and the TVs. Um, just a nice, nice little upgrade there. Nothing too crazy. Uh, it didn't require anything too crazy. Camara's a good, Camara's a good park that just needed a bit of improvement. Uh, I consider that that is, I like the new scheduling stuff, but it is, um, sorry. Um, Except for Benet, as am I. Yeah, that should be great. I don't know. Um, my assessment, and, and I don't. I didn't talk to Dave beyond the call we had. My belief based on solely what I saw with the unnamed show is that I don't think that I'm Dave views me as somebody that's dead to barstool. I don't think Dave um you know hates me or or you know is gonna be one of those guys who's gonna celebrate my demise if that happens. Um I think that I really started to get on his nerves near the end. I think a lot of people uh at Barstool were kind of like that when it came to me. Um, and I think he just didn't view it as a, as a great fit. Um, I've never heard him say whether or not I'm talented or untalented, you know, I, which I'd never expected. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if he would, if he would have positive things to say about me. Um, you'd obviously hope so, but I, I genuinely have no clue. No, um, you know, Big Cat's one of those ones I don't, I like Dan, um, I enjoyed working with him, he was supportive of kind of my journey, I don't really plan on maintaining some, like, long-term friendship, um, but I, that's not a nog, I feel that way about a lot of people, you know, um. I mean, it's such an obvious choice, but I feel like Juan Soto has a huge year. Right now, just chilling. Uh, I'll be at the home opener next week. Um, okay. I don't work. I don't work there anymore. So I can say this. I never 
watched those game shows and the only I appreciated the effort that was put into them and the production behind them, but I would never have done them. Dozen was my thing. That was the one thing about Barcelona I loved. I would not have done Surviving. I would not have done Most Dangerous. That shit looked painful to me. Like I I, I did watch Most Dangerous uh, this most recent season, and by the end of it, it was just disturbing. Yeah, pe- people were fucking crying and shit. I don't know. Um, yes, Hotel in Detroit next week. Thank you, Joseph. I would have loved that too. Um... Uh, for the first game, I'm going to be doing some, uh, I'm going to be doing some man on the street stuff. I think, um, the set, the next two days, I just want to enjoy the baseball. Um, but I, I want to, yeah, we'll do something. I have not seen it. I did. He was always very nice when I talked to him. Um, again, it was another one I didn't have some like close personal relationship with, but I, I really, um, um, he was, he was very nice guy. Uh, I don't think he'll regress as a hitter, but obviously th- in terms of value, he'll regress because he's not going to be able to pitch. Uh, let's go six. I mean, if they lose tomorrow, you know, probably. Post, yeah, yeah, post game videos, definitely. Um, anything beyond that, I don't know. Uh, I kind of want to leave that to the experts. I, I really did enjoy doing those videos, and I ultimately was proud of what we did with those. Uh, I think we got some good t- content. It obviously helped that the team was great. Um, look, I'll never we'll never capture the magic that we've gotten with the tiger videos, but, um, I, uh, I, I, I do think there's a lane there, you know? Now that I don't work at Barstool, did Frank ever get on my nerves? No. No, Frank didn't get on my nerves. I like Frank. Um, I... This is going to sound very pretentious, and who cares? I, I'm a pretentious guy. I just, I fundamentally disagree with his fandom. Um, 
Look, of course, in many ways, Frank is right, and the Mets always find ways to fuck things up. But to me, one of the appeals of being a fan is finding blind hope in things in which there probably shouldn't be optimism. You know, like, I got the job at Barstool by reacting to Turnbull's no-hitter like they just won the World Series. That was a 77-win team, right? Um, So what, to say bothered isn't a right word, but just something I noticed was that in the season in 2022, when the Mets, and I know they ended up losing out in the division to the Braves, but the Mets were comfortably in first place for a large majority of that season. And he was still miserable. So that that surprised me because I just don't know. I don't know how you find enjoyment out of that as a fan, to be honest. Because to me, what sports fandom is, it's it's extremes on all levels. It's absolutely loving the highs and absolutely hating the lows. You guys will see me rip the Tigers, rip Michigan, rip the Lions to shreds if they do something that I think is stupid. But you will also see me be overjoyed, elated, crying, tearing up, happy when uh, my teams are uh, successful. So it's not, no, he never got on my nerves. Very smart guy, unbelievable baseball mind. Great on great on the dozen as well. Um, we just look at our teams differently, and that doesn't make one of us right or wrong. Um, it's just how we do things. I, I would also, I think it's fair to say that he has many more years of experience as a fan under his belt. If the Tigers are like this until I'm in my 40s, then yeah, I probably might, might be on, you know, feel the way that Frank does. But for the time being, I like, especially with baseball, you know, the fun that comes with, hey, you know what, like the team's not very good, but we threw a combined no-hitter and that's cool. Um, you know, I'm, I would not consider myself a particularly optimistic person, but like, you know, I go into opening day optimistic and like when good things happen, I feel optimistic. So, um yeah, it's just a, a difference in fandom, but it's not a um uh, it's not a confrontational thing. There was one time he annoyed the shit out of me one time on the dozen when we beat him. Um besides that, I never I was never bothered by Frank. I usually had good interactions with Frank. In hindsight, did I overvalue my on-camera talent considering I'll say this, LCB stool baseball failures? No. Um, no, I don't. I still think I'm on-camera talent, really. Um, I think something like Chris and company has proved that. I think it's just everyone has certain things they're comfortable with on camera and everybody has certain things that they're not comfortable with. Um it was very frustrating to me during my last kind of several months there. I remember I did Justin's show a few times. I remember reaching out to him and saying, it's frustrating to me that I am so much better on your show than I am on uh, on any other uh, show on the Barstool Network. And I think ultimately, again, as much as I tried, um, if the confidence isn't there, the confidence just isn't there. And... Uh, you know, you guys see me in the post game videos. You guys see me uh, on these. You guys see me in the, in Chris and Company. I'm just much better in that environment. Uh, and and that's I lament that. I'm disappointed by that. That I couldn't have been. You guys couldn't have seen a better side of me when I was doing the barstool stuff. But I was just. I always felt very very anxious. Even when I liked it, I always felt very very anxious. Um, and, and that that was my fault. No, I never felt like pressured or bullied by anybody. But um, I, I guess I always just felt like I had to prove myself when I'm doing something like Chris and company or when I'm doing my tiger videos, I've already proved myself with those. I've already got my audience with those. Um, so if there was, I still view myself 
as on camera talent. I just maybe not on camera talent for Barstool. I, I don't know. Um, but things are subject to change because when, when I started at Barstool, things were going great. So it's there's ups and flows to that. Yeah, I'm always available. Um, uh, unless I'm 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 banned from Barstool, which I don't believe that I am. I, I'm still um, I'm still ready for a, a, a call at any point. Dude, how has he been in the organization for four years, and I've never heard Torquey Pig? It's too early to tell. I mean, I I understand in the short term it doesn't look good, but you gotta you know uh, Chris pointed out Chris Brown pointed out a great point when. Wyatt Langford was Max Clark's age. He was, you know, picking up in the dug, you know, cleaning up trash in the dugout in Florida. You know, like I don't, I understand in the short term, it doesn't look great, but we got to give it some more time here. You know, I think honestly, Landon, I think it would be very on brand for Torkelson to struggle and look totally shitty in the spring and then have a great opening day. Did I like being part of Lights, Camera, Barstool for a period of time? Yeah, that's a weird one. I did. I did like recording with those guys. I had a fun time with those guys. I, you know, regardless of how they felt about me or regardless of how I felt about the films, um, I had fun recording Lights, Camera, Barstool. I've said that before, and I want to reiterate that I really did enjoy doing the show. Um, I hated what I was on that show, and I wasn't going to lie about my opinions. But I, I didn't like coming into episodes knowing, okay, like I'm going to be the odd man out. People are going to hate me for my opinions. I'm going to look like the fucking curmudgeon, the, the stick in the mud. I didn't like that. I, I didn't like being the, the opposing voice. Um, but I also wasn't going to lie, you know, about, about how I felt, um, How close to Gooch? Uh, I mean, we weren't like good friends, but I always got along great with Gooch. Uh, I always considered him, uh, you know, uh, an ally. Would I consider going back to Barstool if they called him in like a year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just think there's a percentage of Barstool people who just don't follow you if you don't work for Barstool anymore. Oh, yeah, quite a few times. Probably not. Uh, Comerica is a much better park than Guaranteed Rate. Uh, I never particularly enjoyed writing. I mean, I did it. You know, it was part of the job. And I don't think I was a bad writer, but I don't think it was my number one strength. Yeah, we're working on that hoopla. Uh, I've applied for that. We're trying to get some going with that in terms of, of uh, media credentials.
I don't believe there's any reason to be optimistic about Javi Baez right now. All right, a couple more here, and then I'll uh, bounce. Good questions tonight. If you're watching this and you haven't already, make sure to watch Chris and Company. Subscribe to Chris and Company. Uh, we've known each other a long time. We're friends. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it started as something of me just doing a show. We talk a lot. Yeah, no, I, me and him have, have been good friends for a long time. Uh, I know him very well. I know how to make him laugh. He knows how to make me laugh. Um. Yeah, I have a good, great time around. He was he was very chill off camera. Yeah, how is uh, Austin taking all this? Is he bummed about not being tied to Barstool anymore? We haven't talked about it a ton. I I mean I feel bad, um, because, uh, you know he works so hard for me and continues to, um, and I I didn't mean to you know, lead him into a dead end, but he's building up a great resume and I'm no matter what job I get offered next. And I've told him, I can't guarantee him anything, but I'm going to fight for us to be a package deal. I mean, I think my best stuff requires his assistance and, uh, and I think his, his best stuff requires my assistance. Um, I think we play well off each other. He's a very creative guy. Um, so I, um, I, I want to continue working with him. Um, but I, I'd be, I'd be lying if I told you there wasn't a little bit of added pressure, um, about this whole thing, because, you know, I feel indebted to him and, and the things he's done, uh, from a production standpoint. You know, I've always thought episode 100, we could do something unique like that. Yeah. You know, right now I'm probably going to, we'll probably go to our separate corners with that. Um, but one day I'll get back in the mix and have Barstool people on. Yeah. Depends on if we win. I'll probably say it, yeah. Do you think I've matured more in the last year? I mean, I think as you get older, it's impossible. Nobody gets less mature, I feel like, over time. Um, yeah, I think I've grown up a lot. Yeah. Um, when things go sideways the way they did, it, it humbles you. And it hurts. It... it um, it, it hurts to kind of go through that and I'm responsible for a lot of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, near, near the end there, it, I, 
I definitely learned lessons. Um, and, you know, I think the, I, I definitely learned that you're going to make mistakes. Like, I think I, for the longest time I was just so terrified of, of fucking up. And it's like my big fuck ups have happened. Like, that's why I got clean. That's why, like, I'm, I, um, the further away I get from that, the better I feel knowing, like, you know, probably the lowest points of my life, both personally and in terms of content and the way that I'm viewed by fans, they already happened. Like, what happens next can be a breeze. That feel, there's a comfort that comes with that. Um, I'm not that smart, Yoshi Butts. I, I didn't go into it saying, you know, I hope I was completely fed up. I was fed up. Um, I was very angry. I was upset. And it was, I knew that things were going to come to a head. Um, and that was just the situation in which it, in which it happened. Um, but I didn't go into it with the intention of like, you know, let's go. Um, but I was very bitter and that those blogs are written from the point of view of a very bitter person. Um, and I said it on, um, uh, these streams last week. I just, I was never bothered by Dave's decision because I stopped being a good representative for the company. Um, and, and so, you know, I probably would have tried to fire me too. I was ready for things to come to a head. Yeah. Um, now I didn't think I'd get body bagged <laughs> the way that I did. Um, but there was a comfort to it. Cause the second I read Francis's blog and realized that's kind of what people thought of me now, like I I'd, I'd gotten an, an idea, but now that it was confirmed, I'm like, okay, I don't want to work here anymore. And it's not, it's not, not, not a knock against the company. It's just like, if you, I mean, would you, well, if you read, if that's what the people that you work with think about you, like, would you want to work at that place? It's not to say that I haven't made a lot of friends here, or, you know, met great people here. There, most of the people at Barcelona I really like, but if you're, if someone's putting that out there publicly, um, it means that there's been some bridges that are burned that you just kind of can't repair. Um, and so it was best to move on. Yeah, no, I mean, I, that's why I think people want me to do some like expose, like big tell all. I don't, I'm totally fine with how it went and, and the way things ended. Um, I'm happy with how Dave handled it. You know, I've moved on from it. Um, no, because, um, Uh, you're not going to, Francis is a, is a freight train. You're not going to jump in front of, what was the restraining order comment about? Okay. I, I want to just put an end to this. That was a joke. There is nobody at the company. There is nobody in the world. There was nobody on social media. Nobody ever in the history of anything ever has ever filed a restraining order against me ever. Um, it is bizarre to me that of all the things that people read in that blog, that that's the thing people took like super literally. Um, uh, we're going to find out, Nate. We're going to find out. It's high expectations. Um, I just, you know, I hope he pitches great. I hope he doesn't let us down. Uh, I would take the under on that. Uh. 
All right, y'all. I think I'm going to call it. Thanks for tuning in, talking to me. Be back at it tomorrow, opening day. Bringing Blazer back out. Should be a lot of fun. So, love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.